Hello. Hi, everyone. Good morning. So as part of the today's session, you know, I just want to explain how exactly we can do an integration with a SaaS lab. So it means uh, it, it's becoming common in these days, you know, to execute your automation test scripts precisely. The mobile automation test scripts execution on a cloud platforms, whether it is a SaaS lab, AWS device form, whichever it might be, you know, you just need to execute your test scripts, whatever we have prepared in our machine on any cloud platforms. Okay, the key considerations are one and the same. First of all, I will explain about how exactly we can integrate our test script with the SaaS. And later, I will give you a brief overview or all the simple steps that we need to follow in integrating with any cloud-based solutions, not only SaaS lab. This will give you a brief overview on any cloud-based solutions. Here are the list of steps, what exactly we need to follow in integrating our code base with a SaaS lab. So the first thing out over here is create an account with a SaaS lab first. As my requirement is to perform an operation or my execution on a SaaS lab, go ahead and create your trial account with a SaaS lab. If your organization is using any SaaS lab, directly use that account. As we are learning, you know, I'm just creating a trial account with a SaaS lab and I have a logged into my account. So here is my account. I have already created one account and I already logged into my account here. So the first step is create an account and log in into your accounts. Done. This step is done. And once after you are done with it, so in a SaaS lab, if at all, you want to deal with your applications, you need to add that application to the SaaS storage or a SaaS cloud, basically, from where your SaaS lab will retrieve your application and it will install on a virtual device or a real device, which you are targeting for. So what I'm going to do right now, we need to upload your app files. So here, in order to upload your app files, go to live go to mobile apps and here there is an option for you to upload as in when you click on an upload option it will prompt you to select the file from your machine and upon clicking on that particular one automatically that file will be uploaded and you can find the desired uploaded files here Okay, whatever the APK files you have updated to your account you can find those APK files information here and once after you have your apk files information so here there are some settings option is there and choose device option is there with respect to the app file what you have uploaded so i am clicking on a choose a device and my requirement is if you scroll down basically i just want to execute on a sauce lab precisely on a particular device a real device which is as i'm using a trial account you know only one device is available for me so samsung galaxy s9 i'm clicking on the details tab now which will display you the android version as a nine so here let me make a note as android version okay android version as a 9.0 and the next one is here the device name whatever the id value is there you need to use this id value as your device name so copy the device name from here okay i'm just copying my device name here so device version i'm just making a note you know and a device name these are the two different capabilities that you need to pass on to your program i'm just making a note of those two capabilities here perfect done the deal click on this a close button if you go back to the steps you have uploaded the app and even you have a captured the desired capabilities information with respect to the devices and after that see here let me try to do a session establishment from my apm server itself there is an option for you on your apm server if you click on this inspector icon so here there is a sas lab option is there if you are unable to find these sas lab option here 
select the cloud provider and you click on a SaaS lab and click on a done, automatically the SaaS lab will be prompted here. Choose the SaaS lab and it is asking you to pass on the SaaS lab username, the SaaS lab access key and the SaaS lab data center. These are the three parameters that you need to pass on. So go back to your okay, SaaS lab account basically on a browser and from the account, I'm going to the user settings and here you can find your username. This is what my username value is. Copy my username value, the SaaS lab username value and update it here. And let me make a note of these the source lab username. If required, we may use it. So that's the reason I'm just spacing it as a source uname is equal to. And after that, on this particular account, if you scroll down a bit, there is an access key. Copy this access key, go back to the APM session and space uh, specify your access key here. I have updated my access key. And what about the data center? If you go to your account on the starting of that particular options itself, you can find the data center EU central one. This is what the data center for this particular account is. So here EU central one. So I have just chosen EU as my option. And as part of the advanced settings, you know, you just need to check this checkbox, allow unauthorized certificates also to get rid of upcoming unhandled or unexpected exceptions. Just check this particular checkbox. That's it. These are the things that you have uh, copied and you have uh, updated here. And then the next point that we need to consider is you just need to pass on your capabilities to check whether it is working or not. So I'm using my saved capabilities. I have already created one set of saved capabilities here. Let me expand my capabilities. The automation name is a UI automator too. The platform name is an Android. The device name is whatever the device ID we have uh, captured and pasted down here in a notepad document. I am updating my device ID and the app platform version is a 9.0. And uh, here I'm using this app. This is a direct GitHub release app URL. And this is what one among the SaaS lab demo URL. Though I have updated my app into the source storage, I'm just using one of the existing applications available in a source lab. And upon passing all these capabilities, I'm just clicking on a start session. Whenever you click on a start session, you know, it will try to fetch this information and it will try to establish a connection with this source lab account basically. Okay, so let us see how exactly it's going to establish a connection with this particular account. So it's getting executed. So it means your APM server with this SaaS lab information, it's trying to establish a connection. And of course, the session got established successfully. This is what the app installation screen that got populated. Perfect. And once you are done up to here, Go to your SaaS lab, refresh your SaaS lab instance out over there and switch to the automated tab test results. And we have executed on a real device. So I'm changing my environment to a real device. Okay. And if you observe basically Thursday, Jan 6th, today I have executed this script and it is running. And if you click on this particular one, the complete test details in a source lab, it's providing that particular instance here. It's providing that a complete information here. So the ultimate point out over there is the source lab is maintaining the log and even it's capturing the video also. The device is launched and it's trying to install the app on that particular device. All these activities it's performing and the complete set of events were captured and the individual logs, whatever exactly the commands got executed, what exactly the log, the complete set of information about the execution, you can find it here. The first instance I have captured it from my, okay, this is the first instance that I have captured it from my APM inspector session.
Now I'm going to my test script directly. And here I'm creating a new script here where in which I just want to add my logic. So whatever the existing scripts are there, I'm just copying one of my existing test scripts and I'm pasting it here. Sauce Labs demo app. I just created this test script, which is a Sauce Lab demo app. And on this one, whatever the unnecessary commands are there, I'm just deleting every set of commands are here. You need to pass on the platform name and the platform version is a 9.0. I do remember. The automation name is a UI automator too. The device name is here. I have a documented that device name and I'm just updating the device name. And the app name, as I have said that, the app name, you can give the app whatever you have uploaded in a SaaS account or we can also access that app using the URL. I'm trying to access this app using a URL. So I have specified this URL. And immediately a quick question will rise in our mind. Surendra, you have just specified these general regular capabilities in our program. How this program will establish a connection with our SaaS Lab account? So go to the SaaS Lab account settings from where we have captured that particular access key. If you scroll down a bit on this access key, there is a driver creation URL. So this is the URL in your script. Instead of passing 127.webdriverhub URL, I'm just updating this SaaS Lab account URL. This URL contains your username followed by your access key, followed by your SaaS Lab data center. Each and every information, whatever you have passed as part of establishing a session from an APM server, the complete details are there in this particular log itself or in this URL itself. Perfect. Let me try to run my test script from my Eclipse editor and see whether it is establishing a session with this source lab or not. Let it execute and let's wait for a minute. It's getting executed. And so one thumb rule here is from your Eclipse editor, you are establishing a connection to a source lab. It means that you no need to start your APM server in your local directly. The complete integration is happening in a source lab itself. So the execution will be carried out in a source lab itself. So no need of launching your APM server or starting of your APM server in this local machine when you are dealing with these virtual devices. See the execution got completed in my editor. Let me go back to my browser and let me switch to the test results and this is what the real device execution is it completed a minute before and if i open that particular result whatever the activities we have performed we requested it it tried to perform those operations as of now i just asked it to install the app hence you know it will be installing the app on that particular device so this is what a swag lab says. I have already a test script that created in my local to handle this swag labs of functionality. Okay, let me try to have a look into these swag labs of code that I have created earlier so that, uh, you know, we can uh, use that particular piece of code here, the swag labs of piece of code. Okay. One second, uh, let me try to pull that code base that I have created earlier. Just give me a second. Yeah, guys, here is a program that I have created sometime before to perform certain operations on a Swag Labs. I'm copying that particular code base just for a login related functionality. And I'm placing that particular code here inside this, uh, you know, the new source lab integration. I haven't done anything. I'm not writing down. I'm not identifying the locators and all those things. As I have already worked on this application sometime before, I tried copying that particular code base and placing here to cross check whether this application is working or not. So let it uh, try to execute and then we will see the execution summary, how exactly it's going to work on. 
okay let's wait for a minute till the execution got a completed so that we can understand whether it is working or not so it's trying to establish a connection and the logics are going on let's have a look into that okay Okay, let it execute. It's taking some time to establish a connection and do that activity. And the thing is, so whenever the app versions we are using and this application, what exactly we are referring to from this URL, there is a small change in the versions. If at all, there are small change in the locators also, the scripts will not execute. If at all, any changes in an accessibility of that particular application. I'm not 100% sure whether the script will work the reason why i have a copied and placed this code here is by looking into the application ui I thought that both are one and the same hence i have a given that if you feel that both are not equal you know earlier we have a created an apm inspector session and from that particular session identify the desired objects and specify the logic here automatically your test script will execute okay good anyways let this execution complete so as it is taking this much of time right i was assuming that uh, there may be an issue with these locators that's the reason it's unable to perform that particular operation anyways let's wait for a second and then we'll see uh, if the script got a passed or a fail here i have explicitly added around 60 seconds of implicit weight amount of time so that's the reason it will wait for uh, the implicit weight amount of time on the command what we have a past here okay so anyways done the deal so if you want you know you can establish a session from your apm server identify the locators and update those locators in your script so let me kill this session and let me try to establish a session from my apm server and let's go back to the test results let us see the third result what happened to that okay so what happened to this third result? Let us have a look into that. Okay, once the result got generated, let's have a look into that. It's still showing as a running. Though I stop my execution in that, so it's still executing. Okay, let's wait until the execution got a completed. Until the execution got a completed anyways, you don't find any results here. So that's the reason, you know, let's wait for a second. So here, even it's trying to establish a connection from this APM inspector as well. Good. So why I'm establishing a connection in an APM session one more time means to identify the locators and to specify the locators in our program to create a logic and to execute it. Okay, that's fine. This is all about a sauce lab integration, guys. As I have mentioned here, the app as a particular URL, we were using this app with a particular URL, right? So there is an, another option also, you can access this app capability. Let me pass on that particular one as an example here, so that when you are trying, if you want, you can use it also. So here, if at all, your application is uploaded to any particular account, SaaS storage, colon, dot apk so what is the dot apk so let's go back here live mobile app and whatever the app you want to deal with it go to settings and here copy the file name and go back to your program and simply specify the file name sas storage on this particular account whatever you have provided go to that particular storage okay go to that particular storage and deal with it okay go to that particular storage and deal with it that's it so this is the way how exactly we can pass on the apps from a SaaS storage but this is the way how exactly we can perform an integration with the SaaS lab good done the deal so let me reload the session i got an apm inspector session here let me try to reload it and see how it's going on okay go to automation go to test results the previous execution got a completed okay let me try to watch the video what exactly it was generated earlier 
Okay. So it doesn't perform any operations. Okay, the script got a failed. Okay, that's fine. Go to the test results and see this time basically. So even the session was not established properly. That's the reason we are unable to identify the locators. If the session got established properly, you know, you know you how exactly you can identify the locators. You can copy the locators and you can directly use those locators in your program. Okay, you can give it a try how exactly to deal with this functionality. Give it a try from your end. Perfect. And on top of this one, so this is the way how exactly we can deal with a source lab. Immediately, a quick question will rise in our mind. Surendra, you have explained about a source lab, but in our organization, we are using a AWS device firm or some other cloud devices. How exactly we can access it? So there are certain thumb rules which you need to consider. Okay, no matter whatever the cloud platform you are using, so the driver configuration URL will be there for every cloud platform. And there are capabilities available to identify the device information also. The only thing that you need to do, no matter whatever the cloud-based solutions you are using, you just need to identify what exactly the driver configuration URL for that particular account for that AWS device form, followed by what is my device, what is my device ID, and what is my device operating system version. If I am handling these three things, which is more than enough for me to deal with it. And there are certain situations where you need to use an app file from your local or where you can upload your app file into that particular cloud platforms also. Either the ways, whatever the mechanism the cloud platforms are providing, you can use that particular mechanism and you can simply establish a connection with that particular thing. Okay, so this is all about how we are going to integrate with the SaaS lab and performing these operations, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.